We're six and a half hours from a big city. We're 68 kilometers from the nearest small town. So we've used the materials of the site to build the, the project. The building's like a seed that's been planted and it's grown. And I like to think of it as an extension of the biodiversity of place. If you look at the grass, if you look at the trees, if you look at the, the way the geology is actually there, the clues are actually all there, but how do you find the right architecture? And architecture is about order, but it's about knowing when to break the order. You're dealing with rhythm, you're dealing with proportion, and you're dealing with an intonation where you play one thing off against the other. And you'll notice on this particular vault, if you look up, you can see that there's an irregularity where the vault gets to the center because it had two different teams, one from one side, one from the other side, and they worked at a different pace. It's actually quite nice that it allows that. And you can see the irregularities here, okay? Here the building's coming out of being in compression into tension. This whole exercise was like weaving was like weaving a basket, you weaving architecture, because you're taking a small component and you're laying it over one another. A weave between internal and external space, a weave between geometries, and a weave between how you relate to nature. When you turn around here, you can actually see you're getting borrowed light through the translucency from the, the rising morning sun. Okay, this Vault spans 14 and a half meters with no reinforcing steel. So that's another high embodied energy thing that you're leaving out of the equation. It's trying to get that discipline into the building team. We made the tiles the weakest we could make them, not the strongest. Only 5% cement. Remember, we're trying to limit concrete because it's got a very high CO2. And we've limited, you know, this is 80% less carbon footprint than a normal building but we were trying to push the boundaries of what we were doing. And I think it's the challenge we've got to do in a contemporary society, especially as Africans. Globalization has made us become who we're not. So how do we re-engage and how do you do that in terms of, of placemaking? The importance of darkness in the sacred. Doshi asks you, where's the darkness in your project? He said, buildings have got too much light. You need to have the darkness. And then you have two options of space. One is to walk around to come up, and the other one is where you, you come up the stairs. And remember, you're in the half-light now. You actually start seeing that you connect with nature again through the, through the glass walling. And then if you, if you fly around again, it's cave and filtered light, cave and filtered light. This is the tour de force. This is the landscape of Mapungubwe that we were in. And you've got the, you've got the can. An oculus is a very beautiful thing because it's, it's the eye of God, it's the sun, it's light, it's life. I think when you're talking about learning from sustainability in Africa, you've also got to be sincere and pause and say, what is the purpose of this building? The goals that define the practice are to realize that they're universal principles of architecture, but there's also Afrocentric principles of architecture. So what I want to do is actually create a synthesis between those two.